Good evening. Uh, my name is Joanne Choi. I serve as the Assistant Director of Asian Market Affairs for the Governor, and I'm here joined by my two colleagues, Linda Sun, who is the Director of Asian Market Affairs, and Jeff Quain, who is the Governor's Regional Representative. Um, first, I would like to apologize sincerely that um, due to sudden change in Lieutenant Governor's schedule, she wasn't um, able to be here tonight. However, I could promise you, our office, our office, office could promise you that um, this is only the beginning of many more events with Lieutenant Governor and um, other commissioners. And um, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. Um, today, I, Tonight, I have the opportunity um, to introduce our wonderful commissioner, Dr. Linares. I'll briefly read his um, bio. For more than 40 years, Mr. Linares has remained committed to improving access to public education. As president of Higher Education Service Corporation, Mr. Linares oversees the Board of Trustees and Higher Education Service Co um, Corporation's core programs, including the Tuition Assistance Program, the highly successful College Savings Program, and numerous state scholarships, including STEM and fe Federal College Access Grants. Mr. Linares' adv advocacy began while he worked as a school teacher in Washington Heights, where he served on the local school boards for three terms. Soon after witnessing the need for more active involvement, Mr. Linares helped established the Community Association of Progressive Dominicans, the Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rican Latino Education Roundtable, and the Parents Coalition for Education in New York City. Um, Commissioner Linares was also instrumental in the founding of the CUNY Dominican Studies Institute at City College, the Adubin Partnership for Economic Development, and the Center for Latin, Latin American and Latino Studies at the CUNY Graduate Center. Commissioner Linares has also held numerous positions in state and local government, previously serving in the New York City Council from 1991 to 2001. He also served in the New York State Assembly, representing Washington Heights, Inwood, and Marble Hill in Northern Manhattan. Commissioner Linares served as commissioner of the New York City Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs from 2004 to 2009, where he worked to bridge the gap between New York City government and immigrant communities to increase access to city, um, city information and services. In 1995, Mr. Linares was tapped to serve as a member of the White House Initiative for Educational Ex Excellence for Hispanic Americans. He was also appointed chair of his this initiative by President Bill Clinton in 1999. Mr. Linares received a BA and MS from City College and a professional diploma in administration and supervision from Fordham University. He holds, he holds a PhD in education from Teachers College, Columbia University. And now I'd like to introduce Commissioner Linares to, to, um, to be at the front to present the Governor's State of the State for 2018. Uh, good evening. How's everyone doing? Good evening. Good evening. Wonderful. Thank you, Joanne. I'm happy to be here, joined by Linda and Jeff, and also had the opportunity to meet the leadership um, just before walking into the room. It is indeed uh, an honor. Um, I, I know what being a first means. I'm the first of nine children. I grew, I was born and raised in a farm in the Dominican Republic. I was the first to go to college. So um, I know what being the first is, and I take to heart um, what you said, uh, this being the first. Uh, it's a high honor for me to be here on behalf of the governor uh, to make uh, the presentation before you and let this be the beginning of a long journey that we have to make sure that every single family, whether they have been here for many years or they've just arrived, that you represent in this coalition will feel that they're part of New York and they will have a bright future ahead of them, guaranteed by what we are committing to do with you as, as a government and on behalf of the governor. So let me begin, thank you. Let me begin by uh, uh, getting into the presentation and I could use this, right? <laughs> New York State has made remarkable economic and social progress. Under the governor's leadership, we've achieved more. 
we pass more meaningful legislation and build more for the people. For the seventh year in a row, we held increases in states with withheld increase. For the seventh year in a row, we held increases in state spending to less than two percent. I think we're missing the last line in the presentation. Uh, lowest state spending increases in history uh, 1.4 in the past seven years. Because we control spending, we were able to lower taxes. Today, every New Yorker pays a lower tax rate than they did seven years ago. Corporate tax rates lowest since 1968, manufacturing tax rates lowest since 1917, and middle class tax cut for New Yorkers who need it the most, lowest since 1947. We're, and we are building the new New York with our historic 100 billion infrastructure. A new Rochester Airport, new Syracuse Hancock International Airport, new Plattsburgh International Airport, new Elmira Corning Airport, new Stewart Airport, new Schenectady Train Station, new Niagara Falls Train Station. New Rochester train station. New exposition center at the state fair. New Jacob Javits convention center. New Albany convention center. Cashless tolling. New Woodbury transit hub. New University of Buffalo School of Medicine and we are investing $175 million for new CFA and new Office of Workforce. And we are creating the jobs of tomorrow for today. Since 2011, the REDC has created more than 6,000 projects across the state. A new National Comedy Center, four new upstate resorts, new Tesla Panasonic plant, new Logoland theme park, new Rochester Data Consortium, expander Elston, expander General Motors, expander Welch Allen, New AIM Photonics Consortium, New Danfoss Chip Manufacturer, New SAP Defense and Security Headquarters, New Dado Tech Company, New North Titanium, Hemp Research and Commercialization, and to restore the vibrancy of our downtowns, the Governor Lounge two rounds of downtown revitalization initiative. Our economic strategy is working. Highest number of jobs in history, eight million private sector jobs, eight million point one. It's on the battery. Our statewide unemployment is down from 8.3% seven years ago to 4.7% today. Unemployment down across the state, as you can see in the chart. Together, we reclaim our role as the social capital of the nation. Marriage equality, pay family leave, minimum wage, the Excelsior Scholarship, Raise the Age, U.S. Climate Alliance, 
2.5 billion Clean Water Infrastructure Act. But as much as we have accomplished, Governor Cuomo has unveiled an ambitious agenda in his 2018 State of the State speech. The highlights are economic competitiveness, women's agenda, criminal justice, educational opportunity for all, 21st century infrastructure, wellness agenda, democracy agenda, ethics reform, and regional economic development. On the economic front, um, while the federal government promised uh, to help the middle class, we are actually doing it. This year, we are giving the average New Yorkers a tax cut of $250. When fully phased in, the savings will rise to $698. Under the governor's leadership, New York State will take action to protect the middle class from the tax assault from Washington. And we will challenge the tax bill's constitutionality as the first federal double taxation in our nation's history. New York State will also develop a plan to restructure our current income tax system to mitigate the effects of the federal tax plan. On the woman's agenda, our nation is finally taking a long look at the mirror as to how we treat women and we are disgusted with what we see and we should be. The governor is taking action to stamp out sexual harassment in the workplace. Prevent public dollars from being used to settle sexual harassment claims. Prohibit confidentiality agreements relating to sexual assault or harassment for all public entities and branches of government, state and local. Void force arbitration policies in employee contracts. Mandate companies doing business with state dis disclose the number of sexual harassment adjudications or NDAs they have executed. Governor Cuomo will also push to codify Roe v. Wade into state law to secure a woman's access to reproductive health. In addition, the Governor Council on Women and Girls will recommend new policies to create opportunity for women to succeed in every area, work, health, safety, education, and family life. <coughs> on the criminal justice front, we must ensure the people of our state that our justice system is in fact, just. To do so, Governor Cuomo is proposing bail system reform that will ensure a person is only held if a judge finds either a significant risk or a real threat to public safety. The governor is also proposing discovery reform and a speedy, speedy trial reform to ensure cases move as fast as possible. We're also proposing a series of initiatives to ensure, a very, every, to ensure every child has the tools, resources, and support they need to succeed. Students launch. Launch a five-point plan to ensure no student goes hungry. Ban lunch shaming. Expand breakfast after the bell. Expand the farm to school program. Increase the use of farm fresh, locally grown foods at school. Require food pantries on all SUNY and CUNY campuses. On pre-K, invest $15 million to continue to expand universal pre-kindergarten for high-need students around the state, creating 3,000 new slots. And after school, launch an additional $10 million round of Empire State After School grants to create 6,250 new slots in high need areas, especially communities of, uh, of high rates of, I don't have that, um, educational opportunity for all, 
uh, students' loan debt is the second highest debt category in the United States after mortgage debt, accounting for 10% of debt balance and amounting to $1.48 trillion in total. We propose appointing a student loan ombudsman uh, to be the student's borrower's official advocate. We will also require all colleges to provide students with the estimated amounts incurred for students' loans, the simple truth about what the loan is. We will increase consumer protection standards so no student loan services or debt consultants can mislead a borrower or engage in any predatory act or practice. And we will prohibit state agencies from suspending the professional licenses of individuals who are behind or in default of their student loans. But the most important action we're taking to lower student loan debt is allowing our students to attend college tuition free. <coughs> Excelsior 2. A college degree is essential to succeed in today's economy. This year we're proposing an additional $118 million to expand Excelsior and bring the college dream to even more middle class families. Starting in 2018-19 academic year, the Excelsior Scholarship Income Eligibility Threshold will increase allowing New Yorkers with household uh, incomes up to $100,000 to be eligible. Twenty-first century infrastructure, Governor Cuomo proposes that cashless tolling technology be implemented on all tolls collection points along the New York State Thruway and at all Port Authority operated bridges and tunnels. It's faster for the commuter and better for the environment and it's also more secure. The electronic toll structure are designed with state-of-the-art homeland security devices and license plate readers, police are on site and electronically notified in just three seconds of a violation or a suspicious vehicle. On the wellness agenda, in, in New York, more than twice as many people die from opioid-related causes than in motor vehicles accidents and drug overdoses are now the cost. We will make pharmaceutical opioid distributors paid for lax oversight through enforcement actions. And we will limit the number of prescription renewals after an initial seven day prescription only missing them. Only one refill will be um, permitted, yeah, without a, uh, with a consultation of the doctor. <coughs> On the wellness agenda, uh, uh, also the governor, uh, Governor Cuomo has taken unprecedented action to safeguard uh, the health and safety of children across New York State uh, by limiting lead exposure. But we know we must do more, and recent incidents have revealed the need to take action immediately. The governor will order state agencies to develop a system to ensure all housing authorities and all private landlords make sure our children are safe from this epidemic. On the democracy agenda, at this time of citizen alienation and outrage, the best thing we can do is let people know what their voices, that, that their voices are being heard. We should make it easy, not hard, with same-day registration, automatic voting, registration, and early voting. 
Social media has revolutionized our elections. While we respect the freedom of the internet, it cannot subvert the law. Last year, as many as 126 million Americans are estimated to have seen Russian bought political ads on Facebook alone without realizing that they were actually um, exposed to this. Social media must disclose who or what pays for political advertising the same way that disclosure applies to a newspaper ad or a TV ad or a radio ad. New York State will also require digital platforms to maintain a public archive of all political ads so that they remain accessible to journalism, fact checkers, and opposing candidates. On ethics reform, with all we have to do as a government, it is more, uh, more important than ever that we have the public trust. The single best ethics reform is to ban outside income and remove any possibility for conflict. On the 21st century infrastructure, we are implementing round three of our one billion New York um, broadband program, ensuring all New Yorkers have access to reliable high-speed internet. With round three, the governor is proud to announce that 99.9% .9 of New Yorkers will have access to high-speed broadband uh, internet by the end of 2018. On the regional economic development, to build on the success of the REDC program, we propose an eighth round of the REDC awards with $750 million uh, to fund regional priority. This bottom up strategy empowers local communities all across the state to set their own course forward. New York would expand its already successful downtown revitalization initiative with an additional $100 million, providing up to $10 million in awards for each region. On the regional uh, highlights, for decades, General Electric manufacturing facilities dumped more than 1 million pounds of PCBs directly into the Hudson River. Governor Cuomo has urged the EPA to conduct a complete and thorough review of ongoing cleanup efforts. In partnership with the Attorney General, the Governor will sue the EPA if the agency accepts GE's cleanup as complete. <coughs> Governor Cuomo unveiled the 2019 executive budget. New York is navigating through one of the most challenging fiscal environments in modern history. The general fund budget gap for fiscal year 2019 is $4.4 billion. The baseline spending growth at 4.8% is $4.7 billion. The, sp the spending reductions to stay at 2% 2, 2 is $2.7 billion. The budget gap that remains after the 2% is $1.7 billion. To close the gap, um, it is being proposed that the, uh, on the opioid epidemic surcharge will be uh, put in place uh, with two, percent, uh, two cents per milligram to fund the opioid prevention and rehabilitation fund. Uh, the second uh, proposal is a health tax on vapor products, 10 cents per fluid milliliter on vapor products at the distributor level. And third, uh, internet fairness conformity tax, apply tax policy uniformly to online sellers by requiring marketplace <coughs> provider to collect a sales tax. 
where does it go? 25% uh, on school aid, 19% uh, on Medicaid, 27% on uh, operations, 6% on debt service, and the other 23% uh, on all other. Investing in education. Invest $26.4 billion in school aid. Represents a 769 million annual increase in school aid, doubling the statutory school aid growth cap and increasing education aid 35% since 2012. Supports expansion of pre-K, after school, STEM, early college high schools. Investing in healthcare, it funds Medicaid at 2.3, at 3.2% growth, consistent with their growth cap. cap. Continue Medicaid redesign team efforts to improve health of New Yorkers at a sustainable cost. Build on investment in healthcare infrastructure, and last, protect vital services in the face of federal reductions. The investment in 21st century transportation infrastructure support historic, the historic $29.9 billion MTA capital program, including $8.6 billion in funding from New York State, the highest state investment ever. Fund the state's half of the $836 million subway action plan and support Fixed New York Report, which outlines options for defining a pricing zone in Manhattan to reduce roadway congestion and... I don't know what the other word is. <laughs> That's okay. Protecting New York from the federal tax assault. Challenge unprecedented federal double taxation in court as unconstitutional because it violates state rights and the principle of equal protection. Launch a repeal and replace effort, tax fairness for all campaign, and explore restructuring options for state uh, for state tax reform. reform. <coughs> the statewide investment, housing and homelessness, twenty billion dollars over five years, clean water infrastructure <laughs> act. $2.5 billion over five years. Our EDC round eight, $750 million for uh, this fiscal year 2019, or year, fiscal year 2019. Upstate revitalization fund, $1.7 billion over five years. Downtown revitalization initiative, $100 million for fiscal year 19, Environmental Protection Fund, $300 million for fiscal year 19, State Park, $90 million for fiscal year 19, I Love New York, Taste uh, New York, $74 million fiscal year 19, Opioid op Epidemic, $200 million fiscal year 19, Raise the Age, $100 million for fiscal year 19. Budget balance at 2% for the eighth consecutive year, fully funds all state commitments, continues historic investment in education and healthcare, protects New Yorkers from federal threats. We must stay the course.
the state is headed in the right direction. I was right. <laughs> let's keep it going. <laughs> the sky is the limit. And that is the presentation this evening. It is a challenge. But before I open it up, let me allow me to just simply uh, convey to you uh, that what, what you see in this presentation is, uh, first of all, a leadership of a governor that realizes that government cannot uh, spend uh, to run uh, without uh, recognizing that whatever funding we have comes from the tax base that we have of all New Yorkers. So the first thing that the governor did was to cap spending to 2%. That means you tighten the belt. And because you were able to do that, you were able to bring some relief in terms of taxes for New Yorkers because New York, like the rest of the country, is really um, uh, becoming more and more challenging uh, and more expensive. So returning on the taxes to New Yorkers allow uh, for the governor to also look uh, to invest on priorities that you have seen here. So seven years of investment, creating new jobs, and really taking the priorities to help New Yorkers in education, in healthcare, in economic development, that is on the works. All of these projects that you see here are set in motion. They are multi-year investment that have taken place in seven years and moving forward. The reason why this year is so challenging is because the federal government is now restructuring the tax system. They have done so at the expense of New Yorkers. And what does that mean? We are sending to the federal government 48, 47, 48 million dollars and would that fund come back to help us continue addressing the challenges and the needs that we have in New York State? The way things are set at the federal government, the intention is to send them to other places and not to really help us address our challenges. So that is why the governor is saying we is double taxation. But more than that, it is putting in jeopardy all of the initiatives that we have, that you have been presented with. And that is the challenge that we face. We must rally and we must unite and we must work together uh, to make sure that what we have set in motion uh, to lead in the state of New York is not jeopardized this year or next year or beyond that. And that's why I believe uh, that you know the leadership of the governor now is more critical than ever with what is happening at the federal level. And I am so pleased that we have the opportunity to present this to you because at, at the end of the day, it is our children, it is our families, it is our neighborhoods, it is all New Yorkers, regardless of whether you are upstate, downstate, you live in a large city or you live in rural area, we are all affected by it. And so I wanted to share that with you because I am passionate about the role that we could play. And I know that we could play that role in what the president in his introduction said. We have to make a difference by getting involved and also by pulling ourselves together to be one single voice 
the voice of all New Yorkers. So with that, I want to now thank you for uh, the presentation that you allow us to bring to you and say what I said in the room before. This is the first time, but it is not the last time. Guarantee, and I can say that on behalf of the governor. You are now connected with the governor. You are connected with his government. And you are connected, you know, with us in your effort to serve the community and to have a brighter future for our children and families. Thank you.